G'day, it's Greg Newson here, and in this video today, I thought we'd just look at one food and one food only, rather than focus on a health condition or a health disease. Because as we know, the incorrect foods or, the, or a poor diet, that, they're the foundation of disease. So what we really want to do is start to, to look at individual foods and how they can improve our health. So the first thing I've got to say is I apologize if I look like I'm squinting, but because I'm outside, I've got to get the sun and the lighting right, so <laughs> the sun is right here. So I apologize about if I look like I'm squinting through the, through the lens uh, of the camera. So the food that we're going to talk today is about today is grapefruit. Now you might see this is a grapefruit tree behind me, and um, there's a few grapefruit. It's towards the end of the season. There's a few grapefruit still left on the tree. Now, grapefruit generally gets a bad rap because people go, oh, I don't like the taste. Or, you know, you mentioned to someone have some grapefruit, and the next thing they go, mm, like that. Because it can have a bit of a, a bit of taste to it. Some, some don't. Some are rather sweet. Um, but it also gets a bad rap because of medications. So we will discuss the role of grape, the grapefruit plays in, in medications later on in the video. But firstly, I want to tell you about the amazing health benefits of grapefruit. So, firstly, grapefruit has a, an amazing effect on the liver. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an understanding of what happens in the liver so you can understand what grapefruit does when we discuss the liver. Within the liver, there is two main detoxification pathways. I'm going to call them phase one and phase two. So phase one is like a, it's like a big net that just um, captures all the toxins and all the poisons and the pesticides and the chemicals and the breakdown of hormones and dead cells. And, and it brings them straight here into the liver. Right? And the liver then uses antioxidants um, and, 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 renders, and, and other substances to render those um, toxins harmless. And then it binds them to something depending on what toxin it is or what chemical it is, and it, and it puts it out through various phase two detoxification pathways, right? Um, there's the sulfation pathway, the glycination pathway, the glucuronidation, the, the glutathionation. So there's quite a few pathways that it goes down, depending on what chemical or, or substance that it is. Now, normally in an ideal world, we want phase one and phase two balanced, you know, like a bit of a seesaw. But because of our modern living, the, the, the pathways are generally phase one's elevated and phase two is suppressed. That means there's a lot of toxins coming into the liver and there's a major traffic jam to get them out of the body. So what causes that elevation of phase one? Caffeine, stress, alcohol, poor diet. Right? So that's not a good thing because then what happens is that all these toxins come into the liver. The liver can't cope. and and, it's, and then the toxins start to spew back out into the bloodstream. And then we get things like fatigue, depression, poor memory, raised liver enzymes, fatty liver, all these type of things um, that, that you know, pain, inflammation, all these type of things that can be caused because of poor liver function. Now, where does grapefruit, what role does grapefruit play with that? Well, interestingly, grapefruit is one of the few substances, the few natural substances that actually does this to the phase one and phase two. It actually downregulates phase one while improving certain aspects of phase two. Now that's that's huge. That's really, really good. So, you know, their grapefruit is now all of a sudden a liver detoxifier, right? So that's a, a really important thing. Now, if we look at the liver, within the liver phase two detoxification pathways, there is a major pathway called glucuronidation. Now the glucuronidation pathway, it's the pathway, it's the workhorse of the liver. It gets rid of the majority of the pesticides, the chemicals, the toxins. It also detoxifies um, estrogens. Now you'd be thinking, oh estrogen, that's a natural substance. And yes it is, but if it's not metabolized properly, it becomes toxic. Now bad estrogens are linked or a direct cause of the estrogen receptor positive cancers. And that is breast cancer, endometrial, uterine, bone, brain, liver, um, lung cancer. Uh, there's talk that it's even prostate and pancreatic cancer as well. So we know that the estrogens, and science has proven the estrogens will play a role. Now it's not, now blokes you're most probably thinking, ah oh, well, I don't have much estrogen, I'm more testosterone. That's true. You, um, you do have more testosterone, generally. Uh, but you still do produce estrogen and the liver still has to get rid of it. Now, if you're overweight, if you're a bloke and you're overweight and you're carrying a bit of pudding around your tummy or you've got the 
you know, the man boobs, um, you're more estrogen dominated. If you have, um, you drink beer, that creates estrogen. There's lots of things in the environment that mimic estrogen. So um, any of the plastics with the, uh, the bisphenol A, the BPA in it, they mimic estrogen. So your plastic drinking bottles, your soft drink drinking bottles, heavy metals mimic estrogen. Um, pesticides, DDT, Roundup, uh, those things, they mimic estrogen. So they still have to be detoxified via this pathway within the body. So the body gets rid of natural estrogens and what we call xenoestrogens. Now, that's all good and well, and hopefully that's given you a bit of an understanding of how the, the liver, or this pathway in the liver works. But what, what does grapefruit do to it? Well, grapefruit contains a couple of substances. Now, grapefruit contains glucaric acid. Now, glucaric acid, it, what it does, it, within the gut, I'll, I'll just go another step, within the gut there, there is an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. Now, if that enzyme, because you've got bad digestion or an overgrowth of bad guys and it's not healthy down there, that enzyme elevates. When that ele enzyme elevates, what it does, it actually grabs these estrogen molecules that are bound to a substance that are being excreted in the, in the feces, and what it does, it actually breaks that bond and it reabsorbs that estrogen back into the bloodstream. So that is not a good thing. You don't want that. Your body's trying to get rid of those substances. You don't want it elevated. To, uh, you don't want it to go back into the bloodstream because of beta glucuronidase. So grapefruit contains a substance called glucaric acid. Glucaric acid actually suppresses the function of the beta glucuronidase within the gut. So it suppresses it. So that means those estrogens go out in the poop. So that's one good thing that it does. It also contains limo, I've got to get this word right, limoline, right? Um, and that is a substance that's primarily found in the skin, but there is a bit in the juice. Um, and it's found in, in lemons as well, limoline, uh, and other citrus. Now what it does, it upregulates an enzyme called the UD. PGT enzyme. Now, don't ask me to say that because it, the word is honestly, it's, it's, it's that long. But what that enzyme does, it upregulates that glucuronidation pathway within the liver, right? So all of a sudden, you're, you're, so you take grapefruit and it upregulates that pathway that gets rid of the estrogens and the, and, and the chemicals and the pesticides, right? So that's a good thing. And then in the gut, you're suppressing the, the ability to reabsorb it. So your body can start to get rid of more toxins. Now, if this pathway is not working effectively, um, as it is in someone with Gilbert's syndrome, you have a buildup of bilirubin. So the skin, the hands can go yellow, the feet can go yellow, the eyes can go yellow, because it also detoxifies the, the bilirubin, which is the breakdown of, of, of blood pigment um, out, out through the, the bile, uh, out through the, out through into the piddle, uh, not the piddle, start that again, out into the poo. So that pathway is um, really important. So that pathway is a problem for people with Gilbert syndrome, which is a genetic disorder, but it's also a problem with people that that pathway is suppressed. Now there is a, a test called the liver, um, the functional liver detoxification test that will actually measure the various phase one and phase two pathways within the liver. If you're interested, there's information on our website, vitalityandwellness.com.au. But if we have an elevation of these, if that pathway is not working, that elevation of those estrogens, as I mentioned previously, they are linked to your breast cancer, your colon cancer, your pancreatic cancer, your lung, your brain. So just taking a grapefruit will actually improve the body's ability to get rid of potential substances that can cause cancer. Now, if you've got cancer, eating a grapefruit is not going to be the cure for cancer, right? Sorry to tell you that, but as a preventative, yes it is. Now, if we look at cancer, Grapefruit also contains a substance called narogen and narinogen. Now, both of those substances, and, and the narogen gives the, the grapefruit more of the bitter taste. Now, both of those substances, they've actually found that they're chemotherapeutic agents. They work the same way, on the same pathways, as certain chemotherapeutic drugs. Now, they don't work anywhere near as severe. They don't wipe out all the cells in the body. They just, they're more target on cancer cells. But again, it's more of a preventative. It's very low dose. It's not high dose as the chemotherapeutic drugs. It's low dose, but over a period of time, it kills cancer cells. So if you've got a cancer cell floating around and it comes into contact with some narogen or narinogen, it kills it, which is a good thing. Trust me, that is a very good thing. So it's more of a preventative. It's not a, I've got cancer, I'm going to take a grapefruit. It could work well with your um, 
your, your treatment if you're going down the chemo or radiation pathways, but you again have to check on the side effects. So what the narogen and arinogen do is that they are also a potent anti-inflammatory. So cancer is an inflammatory disorder, so they, they downregulate uh, tumor necrosing factor alpha, which is a, a driver of cancer, COX-2, which is, it can be a driver of cancer and pain, and INOS as well. It is also um, a potent antioxidant, right? So it helps the liver detoxify. Besides all the other stuff that it does, it contains a whole heap of other substances that are antioxidants, right? So um, the narinogen that's in, um, in the grapefruit has been found to inhibit the hepatitis C um, virus uh, assembly, so the manufacture of it, and um, its long-term uh, staying around in the body. So it actually destroys, it inhibits the, the growth of it, and it destroys it. So that's, <laughs> you've got hep C, affects the liver. Grapefruit is just one of those things that is going to be of benefit. What else can grapefruit do? Now, grapefruit, they did a study, a 12-week study. They gave people grapefruit, and they found it over that 12 weeks, by just doing nothing else but giving them grapefruit, that they lost uh, 1.5 kilos of, of weight or 3.3 pounds. So that's, you know, there's, there's that thing of having a grapefruit a day helps um, lose weight. You know, science, science proved that. The narogen that's in grapefruit is also proven to prevent osteoporosis. So what they did is they, they what they do with, they do animal studies, which is a bit of a shame for the poor animals, but they bred these mice or rats to be more um, susceptible to osteoporosis. So they, will, they would get osteoporosis. They fed a group of rats um, grapefruit or the narogen, and they actually found that in that group of rats that the bone density increased and the, and, and the bone wastage, the loss of calcium and the, the, the turnover of um, bone cells decreased. All right, so pretty big. So if we look at the heart, the grapefruit, they've actually found that it actually has a, a great benefit for, um, for the blood. So there's a substance in the blood that your, your doctor will measure called hemocrite. Now hemocrite is just a measure of the, the stickiness or the thickness of the fluidity of the blood. So if your hemocrite is really high, that means your blood's sticky and thick, and they give you things like aspirin or, in severe cases, warfarin to thin the blood. Well, they've actually found that grapefruit actually normalizes. So if it is too thick, it thins it out. If it is too thin, it thickens it up. <laughs> Blake upstairs knew what he was doing. They've also found that grapefruit lowers cholesterol. They did a test with red grapefruit, ruby grapefruit, the, the white grapefruit, which I've got here, the yellow grapefruit, and, and a placebo. They found that the red grapefruit lowered the total cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol more than the white grapefruit or the yellow grapefruit, but the yellow grapefruit was far superior to a placebo. Now, the, the red grapefruit also contains lycopene, which is found in tomatoes and, and water, capsicum and watermelon and that sort of stuff, and that has its own major health benefits, antioxidant properties. Um, it concentrates in the breast and prostate tissue, so it's, it, we know that it's a, a preventative of cancer, and it's a lot sweeter than the, than the, than the yellow grapefruit. Now, the, the traditional yellow grapefruit can be quite bitter, but there's varieties now that, that aren't anywhere near as bitter. Now, what else can grapefruit do? Well, um, I, as I've got a tree here, and it's loaded with grapefruit, I will take a grapefruit, one or two grapefruit a day, and I will juice them, and I will drink that throughout the day. Why do I do that? Well, obviously for everything that I've just mentioned, but also grapefruit fresh from the tree are a really, really good source of um, vitamin C and other immune stimulating properties. Now it comes out in winter time, fruits in winter. Uh, it's now just turned, in, it's now just spring. So throughout that whole winter period, I'm getting a really good dose of vitamin C. I don't take vitamin C as a supplement. I take it as nature intended, out of, out of a food. Now, talking about um, grapefruit, people that come to see me, they know that I make a tea out of, out of grapefruit. So what I generally do is I cut the grapefruit and um, juice it, I then use the skins, right? So this is pretty easy to, to peel once you do it this way, you have to take these skins off here, right? And what I do, I take the four skins, I put them into a, a saucepan, I add four cups of water, I bring it to the boil, and I simmer it for 20 minutes. Why? Because I'm one of those poor unfortunate people with Gilbert syndrome, so obviously I've had to learn a bit about it, but the skin contains 
90% of the limelin, um, which upregulates that glucuronidation pathway, that enzyme that makes that pathway, the major detox, one of the major detoxification pathways in the liver, work better. Right, so that is a really Im Im important thing. So, and it doesn't taste bad. You just boil that up, you drink that a couple of times a day. I can make a couple of cups of tea, drink that, and a couple of times a week, and that really, for me, it really, really works well. And you can do the same thing with lemon peels or orange peels. Mandarin's really nice because it's got that beautiful mandarin-y smell, but the grapefruit and the lemons have got the higher amounts of limelin. Now, I go back to glucaric acid. Um, the glucaric acid, you might see in the, in, the, in the health shops or prescribed by a practitioner, calcium deglutarate. Now, calcium deglutarate helps suppress the beta-glucuronidase enzyme. It is actually converted in the body to um, glucaric acid. So it's synthetic, it's man-made, it's, it's the substance is bound with a calcium molecule. It's not bad for you, it's just not natural. It's, it, it's, it is synthetic, but it does have a lot of health benefits. One of these, right, once I peel the skin off, I weigh it, it's about 300 grams. Now, per 100 grams, there is approximately 350 milligrams of glucaric acid. So if this is 300 grams, that's 1,000... Oh, hang on a second, that's um, 700, that's 1,050 milligrams of glucaric acid. <laughs> I have to do my maths here. Now, one teaspoon of calcium deglutarate is approximately that. All right? So just taking one grapefruit a day is equivalent to basically taking a teaspoon of uh, 1.5 grams or around that of glucaric acid. All right? So this to me is a far more beneficial way of getting calcium deglutarate which is metabolized to glucaric acid within the body anyway, but you're getting all these other health benefits. So, I know I may be rambling and I apologize, but it's just, a, it's just a, to me, I just, I just find it just a wonderful, fantastic food that generally people go, oh, I don't want to eat that. But the health benefits, as I've just explained, they far outweigh. Once you, it's like, to me, when people come to me and say, oh, I don't like the taste of that, I say, do you drink beer? Oh yeah, remember the first time you had beer? Oh, it was disgusting. What did you do? I persevered. Okay, do you like the taste of beer now? Love it. Okay, it's the same with food. Have it a couple of times, your taste buds will mature, your taste buds will get used to it. Okay? Now, medications. If you're on medication, grapefruit can cause a problem. Now, it's not every sort of medication, but generally your doctor will tell you you can't have grapefruit with this or it'll be in the fly, you can't have grapefruit. The reason why is that because grapefruit regulates the various detoxification pathways and various what we call P450 enzymes, which metabolize drugs throughout the body, it will make some go up and make some go down or normalize others. That if we, if you take grapefruit and the drug that is supposed to clear the body in six hours, but you've taken the medication, or you've taken the grapefruit, and it's slowed down the, 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 that, the, the excretion rate of that drug through that particular pathway, and it stays in the body for 12 hours, you could, obviously you're, you're, you're taking a lot, you're taking too much, but you also can cause a lot of toxic side effects within the body, and that's definitely not a good thing. The other thing is if it upregulates the pathway and it's supposed to stay in the body two hours, and it's excreted in, uh, it's supposed to stay in the body for six hours and it's excreted in two, it's not having the benefit that it's supposed to have within the body. So that is one of the main, they're the two main reasons why um, grapefruit is not um, recommended with certain drugs, which is the same. And a lot of those, interestingly, a lot of those are the statin drugs, like the, the cholesterol drugs. What did I say a couple of minutes ago? This little baby here lowers cholesterol. Red is better, but the white will still do it as well, as well a lot of foods. And if you've got cholesterol, you're always got to ask yourself why, because there's more than... 10 different reasons why cholesterol is elevated. Hormonal, vitamin D deficiency, uh, inflammation, uh, poor liver function, obviously build up plaque on the artery walls, and so on. So, so I mentioned earlier about the importance for someone suffering from Gilbert's syndrome, um, or people that want to upregulate the glu glucuronidation pathway because they've had, because A, they want to, or B, they've had a, a, a liver functional liver detoxification test and it's shown that that pathway is not working effectively. And I mentioned boiling up the skins um, to make some grapefruit tea. I'm only going to recommend doing that if A, you grow your own tree, B, you can get organic fruit 
uh, and organic grapefruit uh, or organic lemons because the, the, the limolein is within the lemon's uh, skin as well. The reason why is that if they wax them, they spray them with chemicals on, on the farm. You don't want to ingest that because guess what pathway's got to get rid of that? The glucuronidation pathway. So you're putting more pressure and more um, strain and stress on that pathway. So only use organic or freshly homegrown fruit. The other thing that if you're interested in the uh, functional liver detoxification test that I mentioned earlier, by all means um, go to our website and, and um, you can read all about it, uh, the information that it, what it tests for, and um, you can even order a test if you want, and we'll analyze the, the results and recommend um, uh, what you should do. Being mindful that if you have a problem with glucuronidation, these little things behind me are going to be of great benefit. Hopefully this has given you a greater understanding of grapefruit, and if you'd like to um, leave a comment please do because we'd love to hear from you uh, like the youtube video like us on facebook let, let let as many people know subscribe to our youtube channel because i'm i'm going to present a lot more videos on particular foods o over the, the coming months and years just so you can start to have an understanding how you can use food as medicine for you and hopefully prevent a lot of preventable diseases and illnesses anyway until next time this is Greg, and you guys have a wonderful day.